Many of us have felt afraid of the dark at some point in our lives, but those who remain takes that irrational phobia and imbues it with some tangible menace. This creepy psychological thriller will kill you should you so much as set one foot into its shadows. Yet despite its intriguing horror premise, some control shortcomings and a disjointed flow to its narrative prevent those who remain from being a consistent thrill for its full six hour duration. You play as Edward, a guilt-ridden man making his way to a discreet highway motel with the intention of breaking things off with his mistress and getting his failing marriage back on track. However, he's soon forced to make his way on foot through the small town of Dormant, where he's haunted by dark demons that lurk both in his present surroundings and emerge from the events of his past. What just happened? Those Who Remain cultivates an ominous ambience, with each location you visit shrouded in a darkness that's only pierced by the glowing blue eyes of the malevolent silhouettes that lurk within it. While some of its attempted jump scares admittedly fall flat, <gasps> the first few times I flicked a light switch on and off and watched a horde of stationary shadow people blink in and out of existence was certainly a chilling sight to behold. Other neat tricks like PT-inspired infinite hallway loops also help to perpetuate that sense of unease. Puzzles are initially overly simplistic. How random finding this here. Just what I need. But for the most part, those who remain makes clever use of light, physics, and audio clues to craft brain teasers that are satisfying to untangle. I especially enjoyed Edward's regular trips into a parallel world reminiscent of Stranger Things Upside Down, where he can reach areas and interact with objects that he can't otherwise under the constraints of reality. It quite literally adds an extra dimension to puzzle solving. Not everything works as effectively as it should though, and that leads to frustratingly regular checkpoint restarts. Those Who Remain features a pretty streamlined control setup, so it's particularly galling that its main interactions frequently fall down due to their inherent fiddliness. Clearing a room of dark dwelling demons by flicking a light switch should be as easy as, well, flicking a light switch. But in practice inching through a doorway sideways while waving the reticule over the switch in an attempt to make the hand prompt appear, all too often ends in an instant death. Damn, maybe this time. Damn. Okay, this time if I just line it up carefully. Wait, this light switch doesn't even work? Oh, come on. I felt a similar sense of feebleness anytime I encountered those who remains recurring main monster. Unlike the rest of Dormant's sinister yet static residence, this beast is both mobile and unhindered by light, meaning you're powerless to stop it and forced to adopt a stealthy approach in order to evade it. Unfortunately, the inability to crouch, lean around corners or create any kind of distraction meant I felt about as cloaked as a naked ninja. And the monster's movements were so erratic that I often found myself suddenly snared even when it seemed like I was in the clear. You decide. Should Jack Matthews be forgiven or pay for his crime? At a handful of junctions throughout the story, Edward must gather evidence to either forgive or condemn a dormant resident who's trapped in purgatory for a crime they've committed. According to the developers, the half dozen or so fates you determine along the way contributes directly to which one of three story endings you receive. However, in practice, I played through those who remain twice, making an opposing series of decisions and both times I ended up with the exact same total bummer of an outcome. I'm not sure if it was a bug specific to me or a general fault with those who remain. Perhaps appropriately, I'm still completely in the dark, but I'm certainly not compelled to play through again to find out if the third time's a charm. Part of the reason I don't wish to return is that there's an abruptness to the end of each level in those who remain that shatters any sense of place for its small town setting. As a result, Dormant feels a bit like a theme park where every ride and attraction is a haunted house and every loading screen is the roped off line you're forced to stand in before you get on. You're at the ghastly gas station and then suddenly you're at the distressing diner, but they all feel like they exist in isolation as opposed to inhabiting the same contiguous sprawl. The difference in quality between those who remains environments and its characters is just as discordant. While the environmental lighting is certainly striking, the human characters you meet along the way are unnatural looking mud people, which makes them somewhat hard to empathize with. I thought you were one of them. 
The mediocre quality of the supporting cast's voice acting only makes it all the more challenging to completely invest in their fates. Transamic. Transamic? It's Tranexamic. Did you even go to medical school? What the hell is going on? Those who remain features an eerie atmosphere, inventive puzzles, and some moments of genuine tension via its shape-shifting world, but fussy controls, one-dimensional stealth, and a narrative that lacks cohesion prevent it from stepping completely out of the darkness and into the spotlight. For more on those who remain, check out my full written review on IGN.com or watch the first 15 minutes of gameplay. And for everything else, stick with IGN.